Okay, so moving on. I'd actually like to address some more Brett Favre talk. This guy's now, funny. It's been reported that last week ultimate, he busted up with Brad Childress. Ultimate so hater. Childress wanted to pull him from the game from the game after they were winning seven three. Um, Favre didn't like that. He just simply said no to Childress, and then after the game, Childress unleashed a fury of just curses and profanity directed at Brett Favre. So Kevin Cipher on the ESPN, Guys, North, ESPN North blog on the ESPN.com. Check ESPN. this out. He's got uh, it documented. A list of Farm Children's bust ups that have actually happened over the course of the season. He's got it documented. He's got it written um, down. The first one being on October 5th. They're beating my Packers uh, by 10 points. True player hater. They're beating the Packers by 10 points. And all they had to do was run the clock out. They were facing, I think it was a third and short in the fourth quarter. And you got they 10 guys in the box. From a run to a Because you got 10 guys in the box. Bernard Berrien, the Vikings had to kick the ball away. And um, it stopped the clock, most of all, which potentially could have cost the Vikings the game because oh, I believe the Packers Lord. only lost by a touchdown in that game. But they got um, dominated the whole game. The Vikings offensive coordinator had to talk Childress down and calm him down to prevent Childress from uh, pulling far from the game. That's funny. Between October 6th, directly after the game, and the 10th, Childress and Paul Far talked about it in his office at a private meeting. Then on November 1st, Far changed a third down play to a he turns a third down running play to Adrian Peterson to a pass against Green Bay. And even though he threw a 16-yard touchdown, Childress again had to be convinced to not pull Favre out of the game. Even though he scored a touchdown. Wow. Then on November 15th, I'm gonna pull you. so unhappy I'm gonna pull you. Favre's play against the Lions. I'm going to pull you after scoring a touchdown. Win. Oh, he's so and unhappy he now. Almost put in back of quarterback. Childress is so unhappy. Once again, had to be convinced uh, to not pull yeah. Favre out of the game. I wonder if Childress is happy been, about that contract extension he got because of Brett Favre. Hmm. And although my famous prediction that Favre would make the Vikings worse has not been true, my <laughs> prediction that he would have a late season swoon has been true. Wow, as late the season lost swoon. Two of the past three, and Favre has thrown four interceptions during the oh, series. This guy's funny. My predi- now, I also said in the beginning, I believe in August, that Tavares that Jackson was Favre a better option. Sort of get away from what the Vikings want to do in offense, which is run the ball with Adrian Peterson and yeah. Chester Taylor all day. Yeah. And this is becoming true. The Adrian Peterson who fumbled in overtime against Chicago. And from what we can see, Favre loves the audibles that cost them the game. By, from Childress and call pass plays for himself, which again gets into the Favre mentality that it's all about me, all about me. I'd rather throw the ball than hand the ball off to one of the best running backs in football. Wow. Which doesn't really make sense. Wow. But when Childress and Favre addressed in the press conference, Regarding the incident um, last week against Carolina, was that Favre, yeah, he sees seven or eight guys in the box, so he's obviously thinking, i got to audible out of this play now because AP is going to get stuffed. But Childress doesn't want that. He's trying to set something up for seven, eight plays down the road, road trying to set up the play action, trying to set up the big play. Oh, that's and brilliant. I, Sounds brilliant. Marshall Ayers on ESPN um, put it perfectly. Childress is thinking long-term, a couple plays down the road throughout the course of the game, and Favre is just thinking as a player... I want to get out of this bad situation right now. Now, obviously, the Vikings have been, haven't been running the ball particularly well lately. Adrian Peterson has been, had a couple awful games in, the, in a row, which has contributed to why the Vikings have been losing. Mm. But that might contribute Adrian to Peterson, why he's calling Vikings audibles. The line is good, and I expect him to get, get back on track. Now, I'm actually hoping that the Vikings will lose out and that the Eagles will win out. Because uh, you're a hater. Because you are a the hater. Vikings would basically lose home field advantage until they would have to probably play the Saints and the potential NFC Championship game, which would bode well for everybody that hates the Vikings because it's been reported this week that Brett Favre can't play in cold weather games. ESPN <laughs> had a nice little nifty stat That's funny. that he's 0 and 7 in his last games below 40 degrees or what's considered cold weather's oh. games. And, and it was his. It was Brett Favre's fault that Adrian Peterson they also fumbled really well in, a cold in overtime. Cold games. Because as I remember, because of the, cold. the NFC Championship game, into, I think it was January 20th, 2007, Favre in the cold in negative, just negative weather, the absolute coldest weather, through that interception to Corey Webster. NFC Championship the game, playoffs, wow. The Packers the playoffs, and the in Giants overtime, and the Giants ended up winning the Super Bowl. So I guess Favre hmm. can't play in the cold weather anymore. But yeah, I guess Favre had no, um, had no contribution so really of even getting the Packers to the uh, NFC Favre Championship game, did he? Compound to the... You want to bl- blame him, but don't give him credit that you were even there. Right now, that you were even in the position to be playing to go to the um, Super Bowl. Just on a Packers note, you want to blame Brett Favre? I think that we'll win the, take care of business this guy, against Seattle. And the Arizona game is going to be interesting because the way that Ben Roethlisberger actually shredded our defense This guy, 
Um, this guy's the worst. Which was just an absolute He's party. the absolute worst. And, you know, you got to kind of just ignore these guys. Because the basis the of, of that is hatred. This is the reaction he got in Lambeau Field wearing purple. Ouch. Basketball season has returned. Has returned. Haters. Brett Favre haters. JLB Sports. You a hater. Let's look at the facts here. Can I look at the facts? Can we deal with the actual facts? You love statistics so much. Let's look at the statistics. Oh, I'm sure you know them, but you don't put those in your video, do you? Ah. Uh, Brett Favre, Brett Favre, Minnesota Vikings, 12 and 4, uh-huh, Brett Favre, highest passer rating of his career, of his Hall of Fame career, his, Hall of, his highest passer rating was this year, Brett Favre, the lowest number of interceptions thrown in his entire Hall of Fame career was this year, 32 touchdowns, 33 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, Pro Bowl season, the Vikings are right where they expected to be halfway through the season. They're the number two seed, which is right where they expected to be. They're 12 and four, number two seed. Packers, Cowboys, Cardinals, Eagles. If you play the Vikings, you got to come through Minnesota. They play in a dome, so it's not going to be that big of a deal if they got to go to New Orleans. New Orleans has proved that they're susceptible against the run. Tampa Bay beat them by running the ball on them. Carolina dominated them by running the ball on them. So they can be beat. But as far as your stuff that you said, JLB Sports, about Brett Favre, I understand you're like that boyfriend whose girlfriend has left him and he just can't let go. Your Packers are in the playoffs. Your Packers are in the playoffs. They got into the playoffs. You've been screaming all this hoopla about Aaron Rodgers. If you're so happy with your new girlfriend, why do you keep talking about your ex-girlfriend? Your ex-girlfriend, this man that you see on this video throwing touchdowns against you guys, kicked the Packers' ass twice. Twice. Throwing seven touchdowns and no interceptions. Outplayed Aaron Rodgers. Ran on a passing clinic on that defense that now all of a sudden, oh, our defense, our coordinator is, you know, he's so awesome and he's this and he's that and Aaron Rodgers is the Well, if that's the case, you guys should end up being right where you were when you when, when Brett Favre left. You got basically the same team. You got a better defensive coordinator. Defense is one of the top defenses in the league right now. You got your thousand-yard rusher back. Aaron Rodgers is a 103 uh, passer rating or something like that. So all of these numbers should support your argument. The Packers should be playing in the NFC Championship. They should at least win one playoff game, which I'm telling you right now, they won't. They're not going to go into Arizona and beat Arizona. That's not going to happen. Okay? It's going to be one and done. They're going to be out. And you guys are going to sit home and watch Brett Favre Continue to do what he's done all season, and that is prove y'all wrong. These are actual facts that I'm giving you. I want you to get on video and say that Brett Favre has had the best season he's had as a pro at 40 years old. Admit that. You're not able to. You're too busy talking, oh, late season swoon, and they want to run the ball. You know what? You're going to blame. Oh, he can't play in the cold weather. Okay. He threw that touchdown with no time left on the clock. To Sydney, to Sydney, uh, to Sydney Rice, who he's made an All Pro receiver. Okay, if Percy Harvin doesn't get Rookie of the Year, he's robbed. Okay, he's made everybody around him better. Okay, that cold weather game in Chicago was it his fault? He throws the pass to Adrian Peterson, and we all know Adrian Peterson has fumbling issues. Was that Brett Favre's fault? No, Brett Favre had the ball, and everybody knew. This guy's getting ready to drive. He's going to take them down the field, and they're going to kick this winning field goal, and they're going to have home field advantage. Everybody knew that was coming because they know Brett Favre. And you of all people, JLB Sports, you know him probably better than I do. That's why you're hating on him because you know what's getting ready to happen in these playoffs. And you knew. Look at him. He just made Al Harris look like an idiot right there. 
Stay tuned for part two.